In mathematics, it's often important to know in what order should you uh, carry out operations. So in other words, if we have some sort of uh, mathematical thing, uh, maybe we want to figure out how to actually solve it. So I'm going to give you an example here, and we're going to actually slowly work through it. So let's say my example is something like, um, let's say 2 times uh, 4 plus, we all throw in some multiplications, like 2 times 3. If I do something like this, it's hard to know in what order should I do things. Do I do the 2 times the 4 here, or do I do 4 plus 2, uh, which would be 6, and then multiply that by 3, or do I do the 2 times 3 first? It can get really confusing. So luckily, there's uh, some nice little tricks for you. Um, some different teachers teach this in different ways. The way I like to do it is uh, using this little uh, trick here. I'm going to write down the different letters. Okay, so it's PEMDAS. It doesn't seem to make that much sense right now. But I'll explain everything. So for example, uh, the first P here stands for parentheses. So, and then the E stands for exponents. M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A is, I'm sure you can guess it now, addition, S is subtraction. Now what this means, this tells you in what order should you do things. So first step, do parentheses first. After that, do exponents. After that, do multiplication, then division, addition, subtraction. So what I mean by parentheses, some people uh, call these brackets. You know, these things within these little... So for example, here I've got parentheses here. So take care of what's inside those parentheses first. That'll be number one. Number two will be exponents. So that will be something like, uh, let's say, 2 to the power of 3 or something like that. That's an exponent. See, something to the power of something. That means you multiply it by itself that many times. So 2 times 2 times 2. That's what this is. You would do that next. Now number 3 here, that's these two together. Multiplication or division, those come together. So you do those next. And after that comes number 4, addition and or subtraction. Those come last. So let's take a look and see if we can use this little trick in order to solve this question here. So here I had 2 times, in brackets, 4 plus 2 times 3. So step 1, parentheses. I do those first. In other words, I take care of what's within these brackets first. That means as I'm solving this, then I'm going to still rewrite the 2. I haven't dealt with it yet. And there's a few more steps to do within here. So I have to leave this parentheses or bracket open, so to speak. And what do I do next? Do I do the addition or the multiplication? Well, I can go down my list. There's no exponents. So next comes multiplication or division. So this is multiplication. So 2 times 3 comes next. Well, 2 times 3, hopefully you know your times table, that's 6. So that means I still have 4 plus, and then I just put in a 6. And I'm still within this parentheses. You see that? I'm still within this bracket here. So I need to next do 4 plus 6. Well, 4 plus 6 is 10. So that's 2 times 10 here. Now, I've got a bracket here. I don't need it anymore. I could rewrite it as 2 times 10. That's really what's happening here. In math, a lot of times we use you know, a number or a letter as a glue right up against something else. It implies that they've been multiplied. However, we don't normally wouldn't just say two time, you know, 210 because I don't know if that's 2 times 10 or if it's 21 times 0. So that's why we normally don't write it like this. We would normally say either, I would say 2 times 10, or maybe I could say 2 times 10, or I could say 2 with a little dot. Those are different ways of writing 2 times 10. Just to make sure we're clear here on the notation I'm using. So 2 times 10, well, that's the last thing to do. So that's pretty simple. I just make that 20. That's how I do that one. Now I can do another example for you. I think it might be a good idea to do a more complicated one. So let's just say I have uh, something a little bit tougher. So let's say I have uh, 16 minus 3 times 8 minus 3. I'll maybe square that and I divide that by 5. That one looks really complicated. But again, I just deal with it like this. First, I do the parentheses. So that means I'm going to take care of what's in this bracket here. So my next step, I still leave everything else, except I just take care of 8 minus 3. That's the first thing I attack, so to speak, because of these rules. 8 minus 3 is 5. 
that's going to be squared divided by 5. I'm going to write down each of my steps so it's really obvious what I'm doing, hopefully. The next thing I do, now that I've taken care of the parentheses, there's nothing else within this parentheses, it's just a number 5. So I'm done with parentheses. Next I have to do is exponents, and I have one. I have 5. Now this is not 5 times 2, this is 5 times 5. So in this case then, I have 16 minus 3 times, and what's 5 times 5? 25. Divide that by 5, of course. So now I'm done with my parentheses and my exponents. Next thing, multiplication or division. It doesn't matter which order I do this. I can make it 3 times 25, or I can do 25 divided by 5. It actually doesn't matter. In this case, I'm just going to take care of the, um, I'd like to take care of the minus 3 times 25. So what's negative 3 times 25? That's negative 75. Still divide by 5. Now I've got a subtraction and division going on. What comes first? Well, division comes first. So here then I'm going to then take care of the division. So what's 75 divided by 5? And that's actually going to be, well, sorry, uh, negative 75 divided by 5. That's going to be 15. So I've got 16 minus 15. So that means my final answer then is 1. Hopefully you see how by looking at these different rules and going through them in order, you can see how it is you should actually solve something that may look very complex. Keep in mind, a lot of students' big mistake is just to assume their calculator knows everything. So they would just plug all this into their calculator. And if you did that, sometimes you can actually make mistakes. I mean, you, you might really get yourself into trouble. Um, that's because your calculator, it follows its own rules of operations. And so it has to know what you're trying to do, so to speak. So do be very, very careful. Don't always trust your calculator to be able to do this. Trust yourself. Just use these P-E-M-D-A-S tricks, so PEMDAS.